Hello, everyone, and welcome. I have all these things that I can't tell you. with somebody i want to know like what kind of baggage that they have i think that's important if i walk into a situation where i'm like hey i have good credit and i have all these things and i have all these things and i have all these things 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 and i have all these things that i can't tell you like the exact words of the exact conversation at the exact time and place because it's like we had a lot of conversations I mean, we talk every single day. So it's sort of like I'm trying to help you guys with the stuff like the stuff that's more current. I can give you guys a lot more like detail and exact times. But when you're asking me about something that happened six weeks ago, exactly what was said, it's like I mean, I'm sure I can give you a general idea, but to be honest with you, like to in one of the renditions oh. of Discovery that Weld County released to those who requested the discovery file, Nicole Kessinger's phone records from July 13th to August 13th appeared in the discovery. It was only a couple months later that we found those who requested the discovery file got a rendition of the discovery file that no longer included those phone records from July 13th to August 13th, which really, those are the relevant phone records that anyone would want to see when parsing through this case. After August 13th, really the only interesting things that happened on Nicole Kessinger's cell phone were her searches asking if police could find deleted text messages and some other shady things. Because remember, or if you don't know this, let me tell you that Nicole Kessinger deleted all of her text messages and any interaction record that existed on her phone between herself and Chris Watts. Apparently, she did this on Tuesday, August 14th, and she says that's because she just learned on that day that Chris' wife's 
Well, Maude's beautiful wife, Shanann Wass, was pregnant, was 15 weeks pregnant. Now, that comes into major question, but that's a whole different topic, a whole different ballgame. And I've covered that in other videos and just might have to cover it again. So as we do look at the phone records from July 13th to August 13th, we see that Nicole Kessinger's phone pinged in Frederick, Colorado, a total of, well, three times in that time period. We also have a record that her phone pinged in Frederick, Colorado on July 4th, which I'm just going to set that to the side for now because it's not within that July 13th to August 13th time frame I'm talking about, but she and Chris Watts both acknowledged that she was in Frederick, Colorado on July 4th. So when we're looking at the three Frederick, Colorado pings in that July 13th to August 13th time frame, one was on July 14th. And this is also a day that Chris Watts and Nicole Kessinger both agree that she was in Frederick, Colorado. Now, in my opinion, July 14th was an absolutely pivotal day in this case. And I believe this is the day when Chris Watts started putting the plan into motion. This was the day when after one of their outings, I believe they went to the Mustang Museum, they went back to Chris Watt's house, and on this day, Nicole, Nicole Kessinger claims that the dog Dieter strong-armed her into going upstairs, upstairs where she saw a picture of Shanann and one of the girls. And she claims on that day, she started questioning Chris as to why he's not staying with his wife. She even went so far as to assert that she encouraged him, starting on this day, to stay with his wife. Now, one of my favorite comments that people leave on my channel is said no side piece ever. I really do agree with that. The other time or the second time of the third, when we're talking about the pings on Nicole Kessinger's cell phone in Frederick, Colorado from July 13th to, 13th to August 13th is on July 18th. Now this ping was actually initiated from Chris Watts' phone. He was also in Frederick, Colorado on that day, and he was calling Nicole Kessinger. I think she was kind of like, you know, hanging around there. There was some story told about getting touch-up paint for her car that was perhaps picked up on that day. So of all of the pings, from Nicole Kessinger's cell phone from July 14th to August 13th, the third time that she pinged in Frederick, Colorado was on the morning of August 13th at 6.16 a.m. This is a critical time because this would be right around the time, a little bit after the time that Chris Watts left his driveway after we saw, based on the security camera footage from neighbor Nate's security camera, that he had been packing his car for about half an hour, and then he took off heading to Survey 319, where later that week, the bodies of his beautiful wife, Shanann, 15 weeks pregnant, his daughter, Bella, and his daughter, Cece, were found. Okay, guys, so I'm sorry if it was echoing. It's I'm trying to find a way to play like videos while I'm on StreamYard and have it not echo. So I very much appreciate your feedback every time you give it. So just let me say hello to a few people. Mama Jane D and Joan Bradley, thank you so much for being here. Wonderful moderators. Hello, Miss O, wonderful moderator of one of my other favorite channels. Welcome. And Anna Flex is all the same to you, love. Hello, Mark Klein. I'm so glad that you're here. Molson, man, my friend, thank you for being here. Hi, Crime Curious. Sorry about the echoes. Hi, John McSmith. Nice to see you here. Um, let's see. Hello, Dawn. How are you? And Mark Klein, Mark Klein again. I say hi, Mark Klein. Hi, Jenny Ross. And you're right. And she broke her SIM card. That was a little fact I could have popped in there, right? Um, and let's see if I missed anyone else. Let's go on up. Hi, Amanda Palmer. Welcome. Nice to see you. Hi, hi, Miranda Green. Welcome. Nice to see you here. And oh, hello, StreamYard. I'm so glad all of you are here. 
So that was the beginning of, um, I just released the part one of my Nicole Kessinger documentary that I have been working on. Well, technically I've been working on it for a couple of years, um, but I've been working on it in a more focused manner for the past few months. And more people started to, you know, talk about this case again. And I think it's really great to throw around ideas, that's for sure. But, you know, the philosophy of this channel is to stay as tight as possible to the factual evidence and proof and timelines. And I know that is definitely um, the philosophy of many channels out there. Definitely not all of them. We know that. So as, you know, I heard a number of, of theories, which again, I, I think that there are good things if they're not too out of whack, as long as they're evidence and fact-based, I think theories are a good thing, right? Um, but to kind of parse through all of that that's out there and sort out the fact from the fiction um, or, you know, the myth from the magic, I and mean, that's just off the top of my head, and to um, make a documentary focusing on Nicole Kessinger, you know, as, as she, as she, the person and her life relates to this time period and her relationship with Chris Watts and the, you know, short time period leading up to the tragic murders of beautiful Shanann Watts and absolutely adorable Bella and Celeste Watts and sweet unborn baby Nico, who literally had nothing but potential. Um, hi, Kristen. How are you? Hi, Para Woman Radio. Oh, awesome. I'm so glad you could make it. Welcome. She said she'd been waiting. She or she said they'd been waiting for a Watts Live. So that's really terrific. So, um, ooh, I just comment just caught my eye here. Let's see. Dawn says, narcs are very cunning and smooth and they tend to lie a lot and play everyone against each other. Well, you know, ain't that the truth? I mean, for what I know, hi, Utter Nutter, welcome. Thank you very much. Another one of our wonderful channel moderators. So tonight, you know, I did want to do an open panel. If anybody would like to come up, I'm going to certainly welcome you to come up. I would love that. I always love when people come up on live panel. Something I want to do um, before we open it up to live panel is just go through what is a legal discovery, okay? So we know in the Watts case, the discovery document is 1,916 pages long. Actually, I can't believe I don't have that pulled up. Let me just do that really here. Sorry, I'm a heavy typer. <laughs> um, and uh, criminal discovery is much like the discovery for any other trial case. Um, it's going to, of course, have some certain elements in it. And, and a criminal trial that's, you know, moving towards trying a homicide case is going to have some certain element elements, excuse me, in it as well. So I have some general information for us to just look over quickly um, about what is a legal discovery? What is it relative to a criminal case, a homicide case, and particularly, my friends, in the state of Colorado? Sabrina M., first time on the channel. Hello and welcome. We are so very glad that you're here. Welcome, my friend. Welcome. Okay, so let's just uh, take a look at what we got here. So if any of you are thinking of coming up on panel tonight, Get brave. I would love to hear from some of you. Let's see. Add Google Slides. Ooh, it's just going to take me one second here, my friends. I hope everyone's doing really well today. I'm going to tell you guys something. I thought it was Easter until sometime into the afternoon today. And I said, happy Easter to somebody. And they were like, Callie. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us all. As you guys know, I've been um, helping out my mom who's been, was recently, just a few weeks ago, diagnosed with cancer. And I thank the good Lord above that she's already in treatment. And uh, of course the treatment is hard, but you know, it's going well so far. So her timeline is really favorable. I'm so glad that they got her in, you know, so quickly. I'm nothing but grateful for that. Um, but just so you understand, my mind's been on things other than well, you know, messing up East, the date of Easter a week in advance is kind of a weird mistake, but you know, this is how it goes. So, um, I see some questions. I'm starring them because I can do that now. And Dawn, I'm going to get back to them. I can't wait. <clears throat> oh, thank you very much, Molson, man. That's really super sweet. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. 
So, you know, this is pretty basic. So, you know, we're going to go through this pretty quickly. But, you know, as I've been talking with people about the Watts case, you know, a lot has been said about what is included and what is not included in the discovery documents. And I've heard some theories lately. Um, one that I'm particularly interested in, um, some moderators from Armchair Detectives Chandler here, and I'm going to talk about him a little bit. So I'm definitely going to link him in the description. He is a friend of Watts the Obsession for sure. Um, and, you know, all the channels that, you know, whatever, They've got the wrong idea because he's a good man he, and he has a good team. Um, you know, I'm particularly interested in a theory that he brought forth recently, and I'd love to know what you guys think. But I think there is a great deal of importance, as one of the channel moderators here, Prider Honesty, has pointed out several times. He's a very intelligent guy. Rightfully so, he's pointed out um, that we need to pay attention to what is included in the discovery and what is not included in the discovery. So legal discovery, without further ado. What is legal discovery? So to begin preparing for trial, both sides engage in discovery. This is a formal process of exchanging information between the parties about the witnesses and evidence they will present at trial. I obviously copy and pasted this and it was a site that didn't check their spelling. Discovery enables the parties to know before the trial begins what evidence may be presented. Now, actually, the reason I thought to do this is I was just on the phone with my aunt, who I've spoken about before on this channel, and she's consulted with me for this channel. And uh, she's actually a librarian now, but she was a lawyer. She also has um, a master, an MBA, and she also has a master's degree in library science. She's clearly an overachiever, but um, she was a criminal litigator for some time in her career. And um, she and I were discussing that, yes, pride or honesty is right. The importance of what is in discovery and what is not in discovery is something that we ought to always pay attention to. Thank you very much, Joan. I just saw that. That's really sweet. Thank you. So there's four major types of discovery. There's inter interrogatories. There's requests for production of documents and things, of items. You know, we've all seen, you know, on those, you know, law channels, I submit into evidence item number 652, and it's a... Uh, pair of shoes or whatever, right? Depositions. So depositions are um, what people have said. Oftentimes they are requested through the discovery process from either the prosecution or the defense and request to admit, and that's request to admit evidence. So criminal trial discovery. Discovery is when all information and evidence is made available to each party to prepare for a trial. And relative to a criminal case, it includes things like official reports, toxicology, toxicology reports, DNA reports, police reports, written and oral testimony, all of which we see in the Watts case. Now, in my opinion, certain things, certain items here are conspicuously missing from the discovery in the Watts case. And those of you that hang with this channel enough probably can read my mind and know what I might be saying, but we're going to loop back around to that in a minute. Oh, okay. So then for our, for my next trick, I'm going to stop sharing this and I am going to instead share a web page. Now this, there, this web page um, is from an attorney's office in Colorado. I was looking through a lot of different, you know, information I could throw up here. This just seemed to have the most concise information. So you're going to see like ads and stuff on this attorney's page, you know, man's got to, or man or woman's got to make a living. So be it. So that's why you're going to see that though. Okay. I wanted to get something in Colorado because recently, well, and for a while we've been asking what's up with Colorado, right? There, they seem to have um, not one, not two, not three, but many um, criminal trials that have gone sideways. So making discovery under Colorado law is the procedure followed by the state of Colorado prosecutors to provide a factual basis of to the crimes charged to the defendant or their lawyer. It's controlled by Rule 16, which is below, of the Colorado Rules of Criminal Procedure. So what kind of wacky stuff do we got going on in Colorado? Because we know it's wacky. 
Typical <clears throat> discoverable material are police reports, witness statements, criminal history reports, lab reports, photos, interviews, and other information bearing on the regarding bearing on the regarding of the guilt and even more importantly, the innocence of the defendant. The defense has a constitutional and statutory right to all, dis all discoverable material. Let me read that again. The defense has a constitutional and statutory right to all discoverable material, such as supplemental reports, lab results, interviews, and any other inculpatory, or should that say exculpatory? Oh, inculpatory or exculpatory materials generated by the persecution within a reasonable time after they are received by the district attorney. So inculpatory and exculpatory basically means um, mitigating or aggravating, incriminating or not, okay? Making the discover uh, discovery under Colorado law. How do you obtain or make discovery? The discovery quest. In most cities and counties in Colorado, that wacky state, either the defense lawyer representing the defendant will make discovery or if the defendant is unrepresented or pro se, that person can make discovery under the same rule. Once a defendant has retained or had appointed, been appointed by an attorney, most Colorado district attorneys will only make discovery to that lawyer or firm. Okay, so I'm going to, let's see. Um, good. So starting here in the white part below the blue, <clears throat> if you seek discovery in a Colorado criminal case, you must file a criminal justice records request and you must complete a criminal justice records request form and submit it to the discovery department of the relevant district attorney's office. And you must identify the reason you are requesting the records. So this is something any of us can do. Your explanation may be helpful and in some cases essential to the DA's determination of whether release of the requested records is appropriate under the law. We're going to go past this because we're not dealing with this type of case. Why making discovery from the district attorney is the best route to a complete investigation? Hmm, shall we say, hmm, after you have been arrested, you, the proverbial you, <laughs> and released you, the proverbial you, will, of course, want to have all of the evidence that law enforcement believes supports the charges against you. Your first impulse will be to go to the police department for those records. However, unless your first appearance is many weeks, if not months away, your best, for, your best source is the more comprehensive file which is held by the dun, 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 district attorney, who in this case, as we all know, my friends, is Michael Rourke. <clears throat> Law enforcement officials may object to the release of the file reports on the grounds that the police reports are exempted under Colorado's public record laws pursuant to the open criminal investigation. They may or may not make this object objection, and if it occurs and there is no further investigation being conducted by the police, you may appeal that decision under the court of law. Again, they defer to the district attorney, which, you know, guys, is common, of course. <clears throat> Making discovery, strategical, tactical discovery in Colorado, Colorado criminal cases. The first question you may ask is, what is included in discovery? Now, this is important because here we're talking about in the state of Colorado, okay? Um, some basic discovery disclosures are the prosecutor's witness list of witnesses with information regarding the crime, copy of police reports, information on whether a witness gave a statement, including whether there is a written record of the statement, whether the accused made a statement whether a co-defendant made a statement, whether there is a grand jury testimony, whether there was any search and seizure, whether a confidential informant was involved in the arrest of criminal investigation, <clears throat> whether there was any electronic surveillance conducted by law enforcement, whether there is an expert being used by the prosecutor and a copy of his credentials in his report, a list of the prosecutor's exhibits to be used for trial, whether there's any DNA evidence or lack thereof, although it was right in their hands in this case. 
that was obviously, um, what do we call? Never mind. Whether there's evidence that negates the guilt of the arrested persons, which is Brady evidence, which is also inculpatory evidence. Now, my uh, former boss, her name was Jillio. We say Jillio around here. They don't know how you pronounce it here. Jillio issues <clears throat> or witness impeachment based discovery. Jillio versus the United States is a well known federal case that stands for the proposition that the prosecution has an obligation to share exculpatory information. And that's basically all that it says here. And um, those were kind of mm, motions for specific discovery and requests, sanctions for failure or refusal to make specific discovery. That actually came up in this case when um, Chris Watts' defense was asking for um, the bodies of the victims to have DNA swabs taken on the neck area and in a certain manner, according to a certain expert that they, um, you know, put forth. Now, in my opinion, and I have a video about it, I have a couple videos about it, there was no judicial wrongdoing here. The judge basically decided the way that the medical examination went down, was under the jurisdiction of the medical examiners of the coroner. In this case, it was the medical examiner's office who has basically legal jurisdiction, you know, within a certain scope regarding the autopsies of the bodies. Does that make sense? <clears throat> So I just want to read this part here. I hope I'm not losing too many people. I'm getting a little deep in here. But um, so this is a this is a Colorado law. So we have disclosure to the defense. We are talking about the prosecutor's obligations. And it says basically that the prosecuting attorney, or in this case, the district attorney, shall make available to the defense the following materials and information within the possession or control of the prosecuting attorney. And these are just your basic discovery documents. So a couple of things that I wanted to specifically um, take a look at here. Let's see. Uh -huh. Give me just one moment here. Oh, I think I kind of lost it. Okay, I'm going to look at comments and I'm going to come back to here. So does anyone have any comments so far? Does this, hi, Karen, how are you? And let's see if there's anyone else here. Oh, I see some comments and questions here. Let's see if I can go back up and um, I'm just going to take, well, yeah. I'm going to put this ping map up instead, and then, yeah, share, 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 share. Okay. Oh, so did I, 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 I literally can't remember if I told you. Yes, I did. I finished the part one of the Nicole Kessinger documentary, the timeline of factual evidence. Um, I put it out earlier today. It's a little over an hour long if you want to catch that. Um, I've been working on it for a really long time. I would love to hear your comments. I'd love to know what you think. And, you know, honestly, guys, if you think that I missed anything critical just regarding the timeline, now remember, this is just a part one. This is the, the bare bone structure of her timeline, um, basically from June 14th until the tragedy occurred, you know, please let me know. Um, okay, so I'm going to go up a little bit and... Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. O. You're wonderful. Uh, let's see. 
Okay, where can I pick up on a question? Okay, Kristen, I'm going to start with you, my darling. There were a lot of mistakes made in the discovery. Yeah, something's whited out. Random thoughts from the technician put in there. Oh, I know. And it's all suspect if you ask me. I think that most people here definitely agree with that. I mean, just even the typos that exist in the discovery and the typos that exist when talking about, you know, critical and very sensitive um, moments in this tragedy, I just felt, um, you know, came with a bit of disrespect from, um, you know, the people submitting files to the discovery. That's just my personal opinion, okay? <laughs> I didn't catch the front end of this, John McSmith, but I'd love to know the rest. That's why she's my ex. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, John McSmith. I'll see. Joan Bradley says, NK, she just went in there, made her own statements because she took over the whole interview. I can't hear her voice now one more time. Drives me nuts. I know. I know. Let's see. Just. Oh, I know. The creepy, the creepy voice, the creepy voicemails. Let's see. This is for you guys. I am so out of breath. I miss your face. I was just calling to say hi. Call me back. Bye. I was like, do you have 401k? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, do you have 401k? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, do you have 401k? And he was like, yeah. And I mean, the reason I ask him. I think you guys were saying that you want to hear that one more time. <laughs> so I just wanted to play that for you. Oh my gosh. Okay. So um, let's see. So let's see. Para Woman Radio says, I keep seeing her look up at the camera in the new video that's released. Oh, no. We, um, in a couple of recent live streams, we were looking at that. And um, there's one specific moment that we were looking at. I'd love to show you guys. I'm not sure if you had the opportunity to see it. Um, let's see. I'm going to find it super quick for you. And then I want to know if... There's anybody who would like to come up on panel. We're also we're going to present a few theories that have been out there. And I'd like to know if you have any theories of your own. I get a lot of, you know, my information, my insight, my tips from you guys. You know, I can really only say I'm responsible for putting some of it together. Like you guys are the channel. I always love to hear from you. Or is that? I feel bad about because let's see like why would he want to leave and he had expressed to me I'm engaging in a relationship with a man who the way he described it is in a contractual agreement but was not in like an emotional relationship with somebody um and for me the way I would have preferred to do this is to avoid it till that contractual agreement was also done and he was done and he could have approached me and said, I'm, I'm just, just had a divorce, you know, maybe we could take this slow. What do you think? But instead it was, oh, we're separated and we're working on a divorce. And that is the part that I feel bad about because I should have waited on that and I didn't. And, you know, I was just like, well, they're already there. So, you know, but then being in a house, I was just like, why? Fix this. Find a way to fix this. Make it work, you know? And, and I would, I would, I was like trying to push him to do it. And he seemed pretty reluctant to do it. He didn't want to. And um, I don't know. We were still seeing each other fairly frequently, but I kind of like, there she goes that looking up, right? We hanging out quite as much. And we were so close, but it was just like I really wanted him to try. Like I wanted to know that he tried and it didn't work. And then he moved on, not.
Not that, you know, they both kind of tried and then he got himself into a situation with somebody else. And I don't know. I just thought he had a beautiful life going on and he could have made it work. That was the way I looked at it from the outside. So is this something you reflected on since this event or was this you? No, I was doing it then. Like You, you said this, this doesn't look right. He's. I want to talk to her when I'm in North Carolina and see if I can going on and it was just beautiful that I was like why don't you just try this out you know and see if you can fix it and he'd always be like well what about us what about us I'm like don't worry about us like that is more important like try to see if you can like salvage whatever it is that you have going on with your wife and and you know I always got the impression that he was a great father to his kids like always and so you know I was like be the dad that you want to be I was like and see if you can make it work and he just like, we kind of talked about it off and on for, like, a few weeks, and I was just kind of like, I don't know. Like, I think I was kind of, like, cold feet about it when I went after I went over his house. And so this was, like, pretty early on. And then um, he told me that, uh, oh, he went to, um, he went to North Carolina, and he was like, I'm going to talk to her when I'm in North Carolina and see if I can get her to do this to like try to like rekindle the flame okay so try to uh salvage his relationship as you've been asking him yes to do. and and then if he when decided, did you go to north carolina um uh, i think it was like the last week of july somewhere around there okay so i mean this was like a couple weeks that i was just kind of like trying to push him let's, that. let's pause at north carolina and we'll come back to that real quick i want you to read this if you don't understand what it means and ask me the question. That's all I want. The only ones that we would be looking I give it to you for saying that. Well, it says. You understand? I thought I was right at the spot. Give me just one second. <clears throat> I just want. That regarded this case, he had also had a conversation with. And I don't want to see this come over my phone anymore. So I removed it. So you re just. You already said one of the biggest lies that she told of the mom. I deleted all of his stuff because he lied to me. I mean, that's what it was. It was it was the hurt that made me delete it, and then it was the lie that made me start questioning everything else he'd been telling me for the last few days. And that's when you decided to come forward. Yes. Okay. So just for context, yes. when people delete stuff off phones, usually we go. No, 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 no. It and, and that's why I wanted to. Go. Oh, it no, wasn't not malicious at all. He, he, he lied to me. It just hurt. Like I had never felt like he'd ever lied to me before. And it was a big lie. I mean, right. telling somebody that you're in the midst of divorce and then you have a wife that has a 15 week old baby on the way is a huge, huge thing. And I was very taken back and I was just, it was hurt. And so at that point I just, I, like deleted it. I had a, I had a few more quick things to see how he keeps trying to interject and he just can't even get a word in edgewise. Say to him and then I just got rid of him. That's literally what I did. I just cut him out of my life. It would honestly been like a bad breakup kind of thing. Like if none of this other stuff would have happened, that's what it would have been. That would have been the end of it. The information was not destroyed because there was anything in there that would be uh, harmful to you or Dad's getting ready to come up to bat. Potentially to Chris at this point, but harmful to you in particular. That's not what you did. No, no, You did no. it out of, uh, excuse my language, this guy's an asshole, so I'm getting rid of him, and I'm getting this stuff off my phone. That was like me kicking him out of my life. Okay. And then, like I said, and then realizing that he lied, that was when I was like, okay, maybe his family is in danger, and they're not coming back, and they're not staying with a friend. Yeah, when did I go over there? Tuesday morning? Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning. I called you Wednesday morning. That's when we started to discuss that you guys need to get everything that I just... You can understand the importance of... No. Oops. No question. We were... Like I said, people buy phone records down. Um, That's and right, they really help specifically um, establish dates and times. Mm -hmm. I think we are, have a very good grip on that in this case already, but there may be a time when we go, we need to know something else. And then we would have it. We don't want to lose it. And that's that's really what it is for us is 
if we lose information that later on we go, man, I wish we would have got that. And we may never even use these. We may never even look at them. But if if we have it now, then we don't worry about losing it. So I appreciate you being cooperative and giving it to us. Yeah. So the first thing I wrote was text messages between Chris Watts and attachments. Okay, so because we're talking about that is not on the sheet. There she goes, uh, looking up at the far camera. As, like data. It's on your phone. No, no. I mean, everything we did was like text and talk, pretty much. I mean, and like I said, any pictures that I had, like even if you were to restore all my regular photos, there's so many pictures in there, and you wouldn't even know which ones were for him and which ones weren't. But the one, any there she goes with a hand blocking. Sent me a text, so if you guys go through the text and the attachments, you will have, you will have everything that wasn't said verbally and was done via text. But I think that's it. Like I don't have, I don't have anything else. As far as like no Facebook, no Instagram. Although Watt says that he learned about the calculator app from Miss Kessinger. And no, no Twitter, no LinkedIn, like none of it. So um, there was never any of that kind of correspondence. So I think that should probably cover everything you guys will need. Is there any particular messages that I would help me so I don't have to look at? Because whatever's on your phone, I don't know how long we're going to get back to. But let's say there. Is there a particular date or time or message that stands out to you that would be relative to specifically to the investigation into this case that might assist me in understanding why something like this could have occurred? I'm so in shock. Looking up at the camera. camera. I, I, like, that's why I gave him the benefit of the doubt. So you notice here how she does not answer the question. This is one of the key points where she just flat out does not answer the question and he basically lets it slide for the first day because i was just like no way like i didn't even think about that i mean murder was not on the top of my mind when somebody doesn't come home for an evening especially if they've just like had some sort of like heated conversation it's like okay you guys are separating i'm heated conversation you leave for a night like i didn't even think this guy killed his wife i mean that that like Murder is on something on the top of my mind when I call one of my friends for three or four hours and she doesn't answer the phone. Like, that doesn't even process to me as, like, a real thing that is a possibility at that point. And so that's why I gave it a day. And then the second day I was talking to him, he was just, like, a hot mess, I could tell. And then with, like, the way he was talking to me, and then that's kind of when I cut him off and I stopped talking to him. And then, so remember what you just said, and we're gonna to get to that because that's probably very important. Yeah. So if you want to, so I would, I would, I
Hello, are you guys there? That was so crazy. I've never had that happen before. <laughs> Hello, Crystal Berry. Welcome. Oh, we just lost a whole bunch of people. I'm so sorry about that, guys. I have no idea what happened. Hi, Mia. How are you? Welcome. Hi, Kitty Witty. How are you? Welcome to you as well. Let me just see who else is here. Since I just lost internet connection, but my internet's not down, which is super weird. Hi, Deplorable. Welcome. Hi, Francie Fran. How are you? Welcome. Hi, Callie. Welcome, my darling. Oh, my goodness. Well, hopefully um, some people will be able to rejoin us. So can somebody type in chat? Just let me know that we are connecting. I'm connected now on my hotspot on my phone. I think this should work just fine. That was really crazy. I don't know why that happened. Hi, Wens McKean. Is it Wens McKean or are you Wendy McKean? <laughs> Hello, welcome. Hi, Ho Chi Winner. Welcome to you as well. Okay, you see me. Okay, that was so weird, guys. I'm sorry about that. Everything else was like loading here on my um, computer, and I just don't know why that happened. Loud and clear. Awesome. Thank you, John McSmith. Thank you very much. Oh, let's see. Joan. Okay. We should be good now, exclamation point. Let me know. One of my wonderful moderators. Okay, thank you so much. Awesome. Okay, I have no idea what happened. Oh, what a bummer. Oh, when's is your nickname? So changed it. Awesome. That's terrific. So, oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. No, no, no. It was actually me. My inner, or I got kicked off, Joan. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, but okay. So while I'm waiting to see if some people are going to rejoin us here, let me just talk about, um, I don't think, let's see, armchair detective would mind if I told you guys about this. And again, I'm going to link him in the description. I was watching him. He's one of the few channels I watched. And recently I, um, you know, watched a live stream and he was presenting kind of a new theory. So there's been a lot that's been said about that infamous ping that so many people have been talking about recently. Um, and he says, well, you know, we've all been thinking that Nicole Kessinger was never asked about that ping by law enforcement. But what if she actually had told them about that ping because like, how are you really going to get around that? I mean, in our opinion, I think I can speak for most people on his channel and myself, the ping is like a really big deal. So, you know, the theory that he was putting forth and his moderators, please correct me if I got anything wrong. And for those of you, I'm sure that most of you have checked out his channel or are subscribed, definitely go do that. You know, he's saying that, you know, Kessinger perhaps beat law enforcement to the punch. And she knew that she was going to have to account for that ping. So in order to account for that ping, she says, okay, like, yeah, I was there. I was just being the crazy mistress. You know how us, us mistresses, we can get really nutty. You know what I'm saying? So I was there. I was just seeing what was going on. If Watts had actually left for work yet that morning, because I knew his wife was coming home the night before. And like a crazy crazy mistress. I was freaking out. And so I went and, you know, I parked outside his house. And what I saw, guys, was I saw him loading trash bags and then something wrapped up in, um, you know, a white sheet. I saw him loading that into his truck because, of course, she can't incriminate herself by saying that I saw him loading the bodies of his precious family members into that truck. And so, Given that information, you know, law enforcement went and they threw their drones up over Survey 319 because she says, well, hey, you know, that's where he was going next. So that's where you guys want to look because I'm your girl. I'm getting ahead of this game and I'm telling you everything. So they went and put up their drones. And, you know, in one of the renditions, my understanding was and oh, hey, there they found all those things, the garbage bag and the sheet out in the field. But then an, another live stream that I watched of his, I think the idea was, you know, she already gave them that narrative. So law enforcement went and they filled that narrative in and they put the bin bags, as he says, with his British accent, the garbage bags and the sheet out in the field to match the narrative that already existed by what was, you know, at that time, their only witness. <clears throat> 
Now, all oh, right, yes. And Miss O says, bombshell evidence, right. Take it with a pinch of salt. That's right. So this is all sort of centered around this idea that, remember, work came out and said, you know, that she gave us bombshell evidence. And we've all been wondering, what the heck is that bombshell evidence? Because the fact that she was having an affair with a married man, that's ordinary, everyday stuff. That just happens whether we like it or not, right? Oh, good, Miss O. She says spot on. That's awesome. Um, so what we want to know, what is this bombshell evidence? So perhaps, guys, perhaps that is the bombshell evidence. Now, I think when at first, you know, when I heard him talking about this theory, I was kind of like, yeah, well, you know, armchair, really smart guy. He really does, in my opinion, turn out some really great theories. In my opinion, he is the one that exposed the fact that, you know, with the shadow theory that the girls or at least one of the girls was walking out to that truck. Therefore, those precious little baby girls, oh, my God, were alive in that truck on that trip to Survey 319, something that we cannot even imagine. Um, you know, I do believe he's responsible for that, guys. I just do. Um, you know, I think his theories are pretty tight. But when he brought that all back around and connected it to the district attorney talking about Nicole Kessinger bringing forth this bombshell information, the bombshell information that none of it were like, what the heck are you talking about? Bombshell information, right? That really made sense to me. And that really, in my opinion, guys, made it a pretty good theory. And I would like to know what you think. I'm going to share with you this portion of the district attorneys. I think this is the one. If my current, uh, let's see. Okay, so let's just listen to um, His Majesty. I'm talking about Rourke. Let's see. Okay. Y'all ready? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I want to introduce the folks that are up here with me, um, and then um, we'll we'll get into the press conference. Um, to my right is Well Fan Coroner Carl Blesch. Um, to my immediate right, Detective Dave Baumover from the Frederick Police Department, Chief Deputy District Attorney Steve Wren, Deputy District Attorney Pat Roach, and from the Frederick Police Department, Sergeant Ian Albert. Um, Sergeant Albert has been the PIO um, from the Frederick Police Department. I first want to invite him up to say a few words, and then I'll uh, comment about this morning. Sergeant Albert. Great, thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you. Uh, I'm only here to issue this statement, and upon doing so, my agency will not, not be conducting any, inter inter any, any interviews or answering, or answering any questions on the matter. On behalf of the men and women of the Frederick Police Department, I would like to thank our fellow law enforcement agencies, the countless citizens, and all those who contributed to this tireless investigation. It was a combined effort in serving justice today. The name of the man, Bellas, Celeste, and Nico. Today, I am proud of the determination that was put forth by all those we're going to talk with us on putting this man away. His deplorable actions were fought back vigorously by honest police work, coupled with the goodwill of caring and loving people. But most importantly, however, I want to send our thoughts and prayers to Frank, Frank Sandy, Sandy, Frankie, Frankie Jr., Jr., and the entire, entire Rizzi family. family. I don't know if you will ever receive closure on this horrific act of evil. I just pray that our efforts have brought you all one step closer in doing so. Thank you. As you all, I'm sure, are aware, um, the defendant in this case this morning was sentenced to um, three consecutive life sentences, uh, plus a 48-year sentence for the unlawful termination of a pregnancy as it relates to uh, Nico Watts. He was also sentenced to 12 years on each of the three Class three felonies for um, unlawful tampering with a deceased body, um, those being 
options and Bella and Celeste, all of those counts ran consecutively for a total of three consecutive life sentences plus 84 years in the Department of Corrections. This afternoon, um, with the cooperation of um, the Well County Coroner, the autopsy reports will be made available and become a public document. There are a few things that I want to talk about that you will see that are contained within those autopsy reports. Um, I'm going to be very general um, at this point. I hope you understand out of respect for the Rusick family who is still present. Um, part of the reason that we kept these sealed were for the following reasons. You will see in the autopsy report of Shanann Watts that forensic um, toxicology testing indicated that in spleen blood, there was a blood alcohol level of 0.128. I want to be abundantly and very, very clear about this. This does not mean that she consumed alcohol nor that she was intoxicated. Um, we have consulted with the Well County Coroner's Office. We have cons conducted with the forensic experts at the Colorado Bureau of Investigation. To a person, they have all indicated to us that that blood alcohol level is very, very consistent with normal human decomposition based upon the location and the manner um, that Shanann and Nico's bodies were buried. Secondly, you will see in the autopsy reports of Bella and Celeste a number of different substances, I think, is, is probably the way Mr. Blash and I want to address those. Um, we have had those examined by both um, expert, expert chemists, chemists as well as, as the coroner's office, office because we wanted to make sure that all of those substances could be attributed to the crude oil and the water that their bodies were found in and nothing more. Uh, the forensic experts con uh, confirmed for us that all of the substances found in those toxicology reports are consistent with being submerged in unrefined crude oil. So I think you want to make about that at this point. point. Thank you. Um, um, other than that, I'm happy, happy to take questions. questions obviously, um, from, our from our perspective, justice, justice was more than served this morning. This morning. The, defendant the defendant is now, is now headed exactly, exactly where he belongs, belongs, which is a life sentence in prison without the possibility of parole. So I'm happy to take questions. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll certainly uh, call upon Mr. Blesh. Also, what I can tell you is that because of a whole host of reasons, not the least of which we're not operating in, a, in the CSI TV world, oftentimes we can't determine exactly when um, or uh, a time frame for cause or, or time of death. Particularly, I think that that was complicated by where all of the different bodies were found and the amount of time that passed before their remains were recovered. I agree. Well, we know that they were deposited in the locations where they were found in the early morning hours of August 13th. They were recovered on August 16th. That's all, that's that's the best I can tell you from a time. Okay, so listen up, guys. She originally came forward and, and spoke to investigators on her own volition. Prior to the time, unfortunately, that she came in and spoke with investigators, she had deleted all of the information off of her phone that had any connection between her and Chris Watts. That hampered the investigation. Um, that, that hampered, hampered our ability, ability to get, to get that, that electronic, electronic digital, digital um, connection, uh, connection between, between the, two. the two. Okay. Right from the horse's mouth, my friends. She was interviewed on multiple occasions. I believe that for the most part, she was forthcoming in the course of those investigations. We don't have any reason to believe that she had any prior knowledge or involvement in the death of Shanann, Bella, Celeste, and Nico. I think that's the best way I can answer that. Yes, sir. She was interviewed on multiple occasions. I believe, I believe that, that for the, the most part, part she was forthcoming in the course of those investigations. Um, we, we don't have, have any reason to believe that she had, had any prior, prior knowledge or involvement, involvement in the death, death of Shanann, Bella, Celeste, Celeste, and Nico. Um, I, think I think that's, that's the best, best way, way I can answer, answer that. that. Yes, sir. Nothing for the rest of the day. She was interviewed on multiple occasions. 
I believe that for the most part, she was forthcoming in the course of those investigations. Uh, we don't have any reason to believe that she had any prior knowledge or involvement in the death of Shanann, Bella, Celeste, and Nico. Um, I think that's the best way I can answer that. It's so, guys, 80% is a behavioral analyst. I can tell you this. 80% of communication is nonverbal. How and why? And I don't think he'll ever answer those questions. Like I said in the courtroom this morning, and I think the Rusick family said it very, very well as well. Okay, so how and why? You know, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, the answer to those questions, how and why, was so right within their grasp. And there were so many missed opportunities that this district attorney's office for went. Um, where those questions could have very well been answered. Hi, DTC Prime. So glad you're here. So um, I'm going to share with you something DTC Prime is well aware of. So now it dawned on me once upon a time when we were all in the live, live stream, DTC Prime Time was there. That's why I'm referring to her that Chris Watts' guilty plea was submitted on November 6, 2018. Now, you know, in the video, Criminal Confessions from the Oxygen Channel, it is an infamous statement from Ms. Tammy Lee that she says, when Watts pled guilty, that stopped the clock. Now, I have difficulty with that statement as it is. In my opinion, from everything that we know, it's not that when Watts pled guilty was the clock stopped. It's when District Attorney Rourke accepted that guilty plea was the clock stopped. OK, so I assumed that um, the information that you're going to see right here dated September 4th. 2018. Now, remember, his guilty plea was submitted on November 6, 2018, a full two months after this memo was written. It says, <clears throat> it should be noted that on September 4th, 2018, while running through the evidence submission list, just make sure you guys are seeing the right page, with lab technician Patricia Lopez, several items were listed that CBI lab ultimately did not wish to take possession of at that time. So guys, what does that mean? That means this evidence was collected. It was in their possession, but they did not wish to go further and have a lab analysis conducted on these items. So you might wonder, what are these items? If you don't know. Those items are crossed out of the evidence submission form, which has been added to the case file. The refused items are as followed. Oral swabs, control swabs, oral swabs, okay? But getting down to the bottom, and this just came to my mind because I saw a few people commenting about whether or not Watts was the only one in the truck. And I believe that this evidence, had it actually been analyzed, would answer these questions. So you go um, like three up from the bottom, okay? Driver's side seat cover from work truck. Trace lifts from center console. And trace lifts from the back seat. Here's one of these disrespectful typos. It says dryer side, but they mean driver side. So guys, if one of the key questions comes down to whether Chris Watts was the only one in his work truck or not, they had the driver's side seat cover from his work truck, trace lifts from the center console of his work truck, and trace lifts from the back seat of his work truck in their possession, and they refused to analyze them. CBI refused to take them in for analysis on September 4th, 2018, a full two months before Watts submitted the guilty plea in a court of law. Like, what's up with that? 
You have a theory. Awesome. I would actually love to open this up to um, open panel. So I would love to see some of you guys coming up. Joan, I think you're coming up. What is DTC primetime said? I'd love for you to come up if you can, sweetie. And hi, Genevieve, if you're out there. I just learned that Texas, where I live, requires corroborated evidence to accept a confession. Wow. I'm going to write that down. Just give me a second because we need to look into this for Colorado. Do you any, I got to grab a pen. Sorry. Do you have any information about that DTC? That's insane. So, okay. I'm going to put the link up, inviting you guys up. Okay. And Joe, my girl, come on up. Here we go. Oh, that's awesome. Guys, give me just one second. I got to run to just get a drink super quick. I'm going to be right back. There's that link. Anyone that wants to come up, come up. You'll be backstage and I'll pop you in in about a minute. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Sorry about that. I probably should wait till someone was up here so I could talk to you. Okay. So I've got one Jenny Bradford coming on up. John McSmith, I'm going to let you come on up. So hello, Jenny, welcome. Hello, John McSmith, welcome. How are you guys doing tonight? Great. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing really good. How are you doing, John? I'm fine. Thanks. Welcome. Welcome to the channel. How's it going? Well, thank you. Good, good. So, Jenny, what's going on? Oh, no, that's it. Okay. Anyone else can come on up if you'd like? Uh, nothing. I have just been watching all, I like, I think it's, you know, the whole Kessinger thing has really taken off since that video appeared. And yeah, I agree. Wow. Yeah. Some of the some of the things out there I'm like where are they getting this? <laughs> right. Well, exactly. I mean, that's what inspired me to do the documentary series because, you know, I know that not everybody agrees with even looking into Kessinger, but I, you know, I, you, most people on this channel know what I think. I think that she has some degree of culpability in these crimes, but if we're going to talk about it, I think let's stay within, you know, let's 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 walk that line of fact, you know. Right, and try to figure out exactly what culpability she has instead exactly. of spouting off that, you know, I, I don't think she met Chris. I don't think she met him, you know, I don't think she met him in 2017. I think that she, it was a, you know, I don't think she met him that, that long ago. Yeah, I think, I, I personally believe if that was the case, you know, this issue has been discussed enough that some kind of yeah. evidence would be put forth that would make that a more concrete, you know, um, assertion, you know? Absolutely. What do you think, John? Absolutely. Well, uh, you know, at the beginning, you were going through the uh, the facts about discovery. Yes. The legal part, you were showing the legal part of what, what the lawyers have to submit and all that stuff. Yes, sir. Um, see, I always wondered on this, you, you, you mentioned the 1900 pages and maybe your subs or maybe, you know, or somebody knows, yeah. but I never, I never saw anything in there about the inside of Chris's work truck. Oh, John, John. Any, any of the forensics or anything. 
about the inside of that, only the contents of the bed of the truck. You know, that's that is ex and that is exactly what I was just referring to here. Let me uh, let me pop that back up really quick. That's I think that's like such a great point. Um, well, I think well, that's, so here's the other thing about that. Oh, here's ahead. the other thing. OK. Oh, you there? Yeah. The, the other thing about that is that they give the state a whole bunch of leeway in redacting stuff out of those discoveries when they release it. That's right. And that's part of the problem too. That, I think that is a big part of the problem. So, you know, the point that I was just making, I think I was just kind of like glossing over it because I've been making this point for a while and I guess I'm kind of just taking it for granted. The document, John, that I was just showing you guys from discovery, what it's saying is that CBI, the Colorado Bureau of Investigations lab, now I'm reading it, quote, ultimately did not wish to take possession of these items at that time. It says those items are crossed out of the evidence submission form, which has been added to the case file. The refused items, John, are as follows, and it includes the driver's side seat cover from Watt's work truck, trace lifts from the center console of Watt's work truck, and trace lifts from the back seat driver's side of Watt's work truck. They had those in their hot little hands in two months before he pled. Colorado Bureau of Investigations chose to not analyze those items. Well, I don't know that they're not analyzed. They just didn't release the, uh, there, there's some info about that truck in the discovery, but it's all marked out. So you don't know what it's about. Right. Yeah, that's true. You know, and that's, that's a really good point. I mean, there definitely are things that certainly could have been analyzed and, you know, very much to your point, they can redact basically whatever they want. Yeah. And see, my point is we don't know because, because they've either withheld that or redacted it, or they didn't act on it or whatever they did. We don't know if there were live bodies in that truck or dead bodies in the truck. That's right. And we, That's and we don't know if NK was in that truck or not, because they they know. I, I'm convinced that they know, but they they didn't tell the public. So, do you think in this in there now? Okay, so let's just and Joan, I see you. And I'm going to bring you in in just a second, honey. So you know, um, you know, when talking about this particular page of discovery and that it says that CBI refused, you know, to analyze these items. I go back to when Tammy Lee was questioning Chris Watts back in the Frederick police station. Now, I think she's a really good investigator. You know, anyone that I've talked to in law enforcement, their opinion that they've given me when I asked, of course, <laughs> um, was that she did an exceptionally good job questioning him. She said so many times to him, you know, Chris, all the one thing that we know, the only thing that we know for sure is that, that your family left in your truck, Chris. The only way that they could have left that house, Chris, is in your truck, right? And then, ironically, from her very own agency, the evidence that was actually collected from his truck in the beginning of September was refused for analysis. That blows my mind. Yeah, what what did you say was in the MB in the um in between the seats, what was it? So right here on this page, it's up. So among the refused evidence items was the driver's side seat cover from Watt's work truck, trace lifts from the center console. So that could be hair, that could be fibers, you know, that could be skin cells, that could be, you know, whatever's in a trace. DNA. And trace lifts from the back seat driver's side of Watt's work truck. Yeah, I don't see. I've always wondered about that. Yeah, that, that that's info that you need, and and it's conveniently not there. That's right. Let me just welcome Joan up. She's waiting backstage. Okay, guys. Yeah, sure. Welcome, Joan. How are you doing, sweetheart? I'm good. How's everybody? Good, good. How are you doing? You said earlier I have a theory. Let's hear it, Mama. <laughs> well, I go back. I I go back and forth with theories, but I was thinking. You know how you have to take some of what he says with his confessions and kind of read between it because some of it's false. But he keep you know how they keep he keeps saying that he slept with her that night, and yeah. I I've often thinking there's no way he did. But I think 
he knew how bad she wanted to. Mm-hmm. And I think that's how he got her. He was able to do that because she liked back rubs before and that's stuff. That's right. And I think he, that's exact because I don't think he faced her when he did it. Well, I I, I, that's a good point because she was texting to her friend saying that she doesn't even feel safe in his presence anymore, right? Right. So in order to get her to like let her guard down, so to speak, to be relaxed enough where he could get her in that state of submission because, you know, her father and her friends and, you know, anyone who really knew Shanann said she was a strong woman and she was strong willed, right? And it seemed like he knew that the, what the friends were saying to her. Yeah, yeah, very possible. And that also, and the other thing I was thinking about is because they didn't drug test him. Right. He could have been, like, we don't know what he was on. Mm-hmm. And mixing it with, you know, we don't know how he was taking the Thrive exactly. He could right. have been eating it, doing whatever. Mm-hmm. But that could be why, you know, that could, you know how that is, mood swings. There's sure. If he's on steroids, we don't know exactly well what, what her connection was. And gave him, and he just ain't saying because he maybe he could be more disappointed. Don't want nobody to know that part of him more than he would the murders. But well, I actually know, that's saying. very true. And you know, I told I've told like for those of you who don't know, as part of researching this case, I did like the Thrive routine, the regiment or whatever for a month. Um, I did a live stream recently, and I went through a lot of the ingredients. As most of you see, I have a lot of the product left over because. You know, I didn't continue with most of it after that month. But when I did try those duo patches, like it thermogenically had an effect on me. Like my body temperature was increased. I was like sweating really easily. People were commenting that I was flushed. So if you were to, you know, and, you know, obviously I wasn't taking any other substances. If you were to, you know, even, you know, use those patches, combine it with some other illicit substance. I mean, who knows what the effect would be. Hi, Nancy. I don't even think Hi, you have Alan. to combine it. What's that? I don't even think you have to combine it. There are certain ingredients in there. When I looked up some of the ingredients, like I want, uh, I'd have to go back and look. But when I was researching the ingredients, one of them was Effigy. it can cause psychosis. Yeah. Um, no, I think it was like no gam gam. I want to say it was like Gambiano or something like that. I, like yeah. I said, I'd have to go back and look. Yeah, but yeah, honestly, if you look it up, there has been like if you go to the NIH website uh-huh. and you look it up, it will basically say that it has been known to cause psychosis in certain cases. Wow. Well, I'm glad that I didn't know that before I decided to do my 30 day trial because I wouldn't have taken it. <laughs> but, you know, I was very aware, during, just so everybody knows, because I kind of feel like silly being like, I tried it on myself. I mean, a lot of my friends saw this stuff. I was always checking in with myself, being very aware of how I was feeling when I was taking this stuff. But yeah, I totally believe it because specifically from um, those duo patches, those duo burn patches, you really felt a thermogenic effect for sure. Yeah, Wait, if you feel good, if you feel good, and you, so you're losing weight, and then he did bulk up like physically a lot. Don't you think, like muscular from being, he was kind of flabby a lot. Like he got big, but then he, yeah. I feel like he toned fast. Like you know how, like um, yeah, he toned up really fast. Yeah, like tone. I was yeah, kind of um, he did. He, he and then did you know how she mentions the gym. And Kay, she says, I met yeah. him, you know, when he, at the gym. I feel like there's that, that, that they definitely like met at the gym. I think there was more to the gym than mm-hmm. we know. Like the real, you know, he wasn't working out in his basement for the gym. Right. But she, well, she mentions that a couple of times. There was that event, and I don't know if this has to do with the July 4th possible meeting where it was an Anandarko event, and there's a picture of NK there, you know, partaking in some kind of relay. It was a charitable event. I'm sorry, I don't really know that much about it, but I know that there was a possibility where there was a charitable event that her gym sponsored and Ann and Darko also sponsored at some point where they could have possibly met. But I, I don't know any more about that, honestly. No, it just seemed like her one statement was there was a lot of gym. And yeah. Then she the gym, you know, not the gym. Oh, the gym. person gym. Yeah, no, it was gym, no. gym, J-Y-M. Oh, okay, gym, yeah. yeah. I'll have to get it. <laughs> 
Here, let me take a couple of questions or comments here. So from LNL Transport, and hello and welcome, my friend. Um, LNL Transport says, I wonder if NK killed the baby girls, and that's why they threw them in the tanks rather than just bury them. Aw. Um, due to CW not being able to. Oh, I mean, you know, that is very possible. It's always so hard for me to even think about or talk about, you know, that dynamic of the case. But I mean, it is a dynamic of the case. And, you know, it does need to be considered and explored. You know, I always feel that, you know, it, we I was talking about this in the last live stream as well. And I think a couple of you agreed that when one of the few signs I believe that Chris Watts puts forth as a tell when he's actually telling the truth is that he expresses some degree of emotion, which is not often, right? And when he is talking about what happened to Precious Bella and please God rest her soul, you know, he he does that, in my opinion, of all the recordings we have of him is the most emotion that we um, we we hear from him, you know? That's why I wish we knew about the drug. They drug test you for everything nowadays. They didn't drug test it makes no sense. I know. That it's almost to me. I would feel better knowing that because otherwise, because I feel like he he planned their murders. He says it. He says it every time and worse and worse. And yeah. the, if I was him, the way he's so quiet and timid as he pretends, why would you even give them out? Worse and worse every time, even more grotesque. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. That would yeah. be something I would take to my grave. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. You know, and I just, I, you know, I think, you know, there's, he, he, he definitely alludes to it. And, you know, the documentary video that I put out today, the second half of it, after going over the timeline of NK from Sunday going into Monday, goes back in time to when, you know, I believe, as many of you know, that, you know, the, the, you know, it really started turning in Chris Watts' mind when she was at their home you know, which I just think is like blasphemy on July 14th. And she got really upset because she saw the picture of Shanann, one of the girls. And ultimately she says to him, Chris, I want to give you your first son. Well, good Lord. And their own, you know, spoken timeline of their relationship, that's only two weeks into it. That's so crazy. There's something so amiss there. You know, the whole picture is amiss. And, you know, it's like we really just have to figure out you know what the details are and it's astonishing to your point lnl transport that law enforcement hasn't gone further into figuring this out on their own or to your point john mick smith maybe they have and we just are not privy to that why would law enforcement here's what i don't understand so if they had such a strong you know case and everything was so black and white and, you know, Chris had done this, they accepted his confession, you know, not obviously his first confession, he didn't confess to killing the girls, but his second confession, you know, they went back for a purpose. So they knew that something else was going on, or they would never have bothered, it would have been a shut and done thing. He killed Shanann, he killed the girls, he took them in their truck, dumped them, and that would be the end of it. I mean, there is something very wrong with the fact that they have to make up anything different. They have to change anything in the discovery. There's, it should be, mm -hmm. it, you know, if it's so cut and dry, there I should not be any of these questions. Well, that's right. And you know what? I think that one of the prompting reasons they did that is our friend, armchair detective. And, you know, for whatever you think of this man, you know, he did discover the shadows, you know, in that footage from neighbor Nate's security camera footage that I do believe is one, and I believe it's Bella, of the little girls walking to her daddy and he picking her up and putting the little girl in the car. I think that that happened on, moderators help me out if I'm wrong, something like January 10th um, of 2019. And it was a month later that CBI, bomb over and the FBI were in Dodge prison interviewing that man again. It's crazy. But was that was not it. But from my understanding is Nate's, you know, when I looked into Nate's camera and how that worked, that stuff didn't come from his actual camera company as requested. They never got that information. I so the right. whatever. Yeah. So whatever they have from Nate's camera is what Nate gave them. That's and right. I don't know. 
I don't know technology enough to know how things can be doctored and looked at and whatever, but mm. we're missing a lot of footage. Okay. We should right. have footage for the 24 hours before and the 24 hours after. And we That's don't, right. we only have this very small piece of footage and they're not willing to give up anything else. They haven't like, you know, the camera company has not given any of the information. So all we have is what he has shown us. So yeah. I don't even know if that would stand up in court. I mean, if you actually went to court mm -hmm. and said, well, the camera company, you know, they didn't send us any of the actual footage, you know, their documented footage. I, I don't even know if they, you could use that. Well, you know what, Jennifer, you're exactly right on what you said. And in addition to that, Jennifer, I think what is really interesting, and I'm not going to be able to bring it up right now because I wasn't prepared to bring this up, and I don't know exactly where it is in Discovery, but Baumhofer only requested approximately a 12-hour time period, and that was right around, I believe, and if anybody knows this, please pop it into chat, it was right around the time that... Um, you know, Shanann got home until like um, the next day around noon when um, yes. saw an alarm. Do you know about this, John McSmith? An alarm of one of the vivid alarms went off in the home. Is that correct? Um, I'm not real hip on all those, um, you know, alarms oh, and stuff. The reason I he just... requested 12 hour time frame is because that's when the crime happened. Right, I just yeah. think it's stupid. They just assumed the back door didn't. Nobody went out the back door. That was just dismissed. Period. Like they never even considered anybody went out the back door ever. Yeah, that's. Uh, I don't. I don't, like, I don't know that they didn't consider that. Yeah, that not not to a degree that they should have. Well, well I, I don't have any idea what degree they considered looking at the back. There, there was never any. I, I don't know that there's any info about the back. Chris said that. Right. Uh, but let, let let me ask you this. Yeah. Uh, to the panel and stuff. You, you guys made some, some good points, but you brought up when they went and talked to Chris, you know, whenever that was like March or whatever that next year, and they went and talked to him in prison. Yeah. And that that's kind of suspect, but what if, uh, because Chris changed the story yet again on, on that occasion. And okay. he said that he took the girls out to survey and killed them out there. Yeah. And so if you, kind of piece together what Watts has said he's basically and, and try to pick out what's true and what's not he's basically said that he killed his wife in the house that's right and he dragged her down the steps and the in a comforter or in that probably in that sheet that they found out there that's right yeah and that Bella saw him yeah and when he backed this and she's already by the time he backs that truck up and we see it on the neighbor's cam. Shannon's already gone. Yeah. And he's got he's got her body right there at the door. That's so right. He backs up the, the first thing he and I haven't seen a movie. Maybe this is in a, some movie or something. I don't know. I don't watch any of that. <laughs> he backed up and, and I, I believe that he's telling the truth when he was in Dodge or whatever and they interviewed him that the girls were still alive. Yeah, yeah. I believe that too, John. And they yeah. rode with him. They rode with him out to survey. Because he gave this kind of heart-wrenching detail that to me is indicative of him telling truth. Yeah, he, yeah, he didn't sound like he was lying when, when he right. was at Don. He didn't know they were coming either. So I think that's, that's good. That's right. He didn't know they were coming. He didn't. And right. See, he, he, to, to me, he didn't, you know, he didn't, when he's in that interview, in the, when he's getting busted, he sounds like he's lying about half, that's about right. everything. But when right. he's in Dodge, he, he, he sounded like and you got to listen closely because the audio is terrible on that. But but he sounded yeah. like, you know, that's what happened. And that's why the dogs didn't smell anything, because all there really was was just Shannon and just barely for the, the less than a minute it took him to get her outside. That's right. That's right. That's a really good point, John. And I, I agree with you, John. That I think that, you know, that version that he pulled when he was in Dodge, I think that's as close as we're ever going to get to the truth. Now, maybe you know, that's why he wanted the autopsies sealed. That, that's that's, that's so an good. excellent point. That's an because, excellent point. Yeah. What what sealed? The, the autopsy, autopsy sealed. Why would he want the autopsy sealed? Because he don't want people to see the pictures, maybe the bruises and stuff. Well, the, on, on those kids, you're not going to. There's no evidence on the opto on, yeah, on those kids. No, God. Not, yeah, not from get, being in those tanks. 
Yeah, but why did you say what he wanted? Honey, I'm sorry. Say that. Was it him that wanted concealed? Yes. Yeah, it was a defense yeah. motion. Yeah. Don't you feel like there's a reason or no? Maybe not. Yeah, there's got to be a reason. There's got to be a reason. I mean, for the little that, you know, kind of it seems like the defense did, I think that everything was very intentional. Let me get to a couple of questions and comments here, guys, from our chat. So um, I know I know Tarot by Undercover Mermaid, awesome and welcome, by the way. Um, says, this is a stretch, but what if the camera company and Anandarko had a private settlement because you can see her and they never wanted that footage ah, to see? Oh, yeah. I mean, that is a possibility. I mean, things went so wrong in this case. I guess that, you know, I have really um, tried to stay away from it. And by the light of day, I got you, girl. Um, but you know, big money is one of the possible explanations for all of these things that went amiss. And then I know Tarot by Undercover Mermaid says, again, there's a point that money was involved. Yep. Yeah, probably it seems to be in everything. Yeah, that's basically what I was just saying. I agree with you on that. Um, Kristen says, mm -hmm. I think a lot of it has to do with Ann and Darko um, wanting the investigation shut down. And it worked in NK's favor. I think that's quite possible as well. And then um, Wendy brings up a good point. I was going to mention this, but this, you know, gets us really deep down the rabbit hole. Or Wentz McKean says, um, wasn't there tire tracks out back? And, you know, I have seen that footage or those pictures. Apparently there were tire tracks out back going right up to the fence. Um, you know, I never went so far down that road to verify if that, photo is actually like from the relevant day or not does anyone know anything more about that and then Kristen just really quickly says Chris would have taken them out the back because he knows there are no cameras so we're all kind of moving in the same direction there on that but doesn't that blow up NK's spot if the kids are alive what culpability did she have if these kids were alive I mean we're we're putting do you know what I'm saying? Like she's literally like what helping him load the car with his alive kids. And when I mean, did he have the time? I mean, I, when did I, he I have the time? But I mean, I, I personally just want to say that I'm not attached to nail NK to the wall, do or die. I am attached to justice for the victims, do or die. You know what I mean? Right. But I mean, that is a good point. And then Ho Chi Winter says, how could he load SW into his truck as easily as, you know, it appeared you know, you didn't see a lot of movement in the truck or anything. And I think that might be a lot to your point, Jennifer, right? Like the well, it, remember the car that pulled up before, way before, like 930, there was a car that pulled 1125. up. 1125. Yeah, at 1125, um, yeah, there was a car that pulled up. I can get that um, screenshot up for you at the very least, or maybe even the footage if you guys want to keep chatting here. Well, see, I would think that law enforcement would see that would be where Nate's camera, they would need that information and not just from, you know, the, the, you know, 5 a.m. or whatever it was till, you know, till he left. I mean, sure. you know, which is the only footage that we see. He, we would need that footage from the night before. Who was there? When did he come home? That type of thing. Where was he at? Um, why, but, do you, why do you need you know, to know that? Well, okay, because so John, so the screenshot that I'm about to show you is um, from Neighbor Nate's camera footage, and we can see this from the vantage point of Officer Coonrod when they're watching the television, right, when Chris Watts is there and Nate is there and NK Sun is there, and we see that 1125, which is just a couple minutes after their 111-minute phone call, Nate's camera is triggered and there are headlights, you know, going by the Watts house. Um, you'll see that right here. Let's see. You guys can keep talking. I'm almost there. <laughs> oh. Well, you're fine. Let's see. Oh, did I not have it in the screenshot? I've got it somewhere here. I mean, does anybody think that he had, in the time frame and the phone calls that he was making um, and what have you, I mean, what I mean, I think they pinned it down to he had 19 minutes, 19 minutes to kill his kids, bury his wife and dump them in that uh, the oil tank. And you know, that is that's actually not right. 
Um, I went through that recently in a live stream, and I, I would love to go over that really quickly because we listened to a portion of what, and I didn't mean to cut you off, sweetie. I'm sorry. We no, listened, that's fine. I just am wondering. We listened to a portion of Watt's interview with um, Tammy Lee and Graham Coder. It was just um, prior to his arrest, okay? And so she said, so Tammy Lee says to him, so how long did this take? And um, he's asking about, you know, um, sign of the cross, you know, burying sweet Shanann. Okay. And he says 20 to 30 minutes. And I believe when he was asked that in that moment, I think, you know, that night he was probably very aware or that morning, excuse me, very aware of, you know, the time frame he was working with. So I think that he probably knew it took about 20 to 30 minutes. So here, I broke this down in um, this, this portion of the live stream I'm going to find for you really quick. If you guys want to just keep chatting for a minute. Hey, I wanted to bring up uh, when you when you another thing in the discovery, you showed a little uh, diagram of a maybe a ping or something. That's right. And I, and I just want to let you guys know and your subs know if, if you if you want to learn about pings and how they work and, and that kind of thing, then I don't know if you've ever heard of Heather Elvis, the Heather Elvis case. Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that case from South Carolina. I was down in Myrtle beach when they, right after that happened, when they were looking for her. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tammy Moore and Sydney Moore, uh, Sydney had a mistrial the first time okay. and, and then they tried his wife and she got convicted. Then they retried Sydney and he got convicted That's and it's right. almost, it's almost completely on ping evidence. Oh my and goodness. They, and they brought in the guy from Silicon Valley. His name is, Michael Melson with an M. Okay. Michael Melson. If you look it up. I'm writing it down right now. Michael Melson with an M. Okay. Yeah. Not, not Nelson. It's Melson. Melson. Okay. He, he's the guy that wrote the software that runs the whole ping system. He's the main oh my guy. Gosh. I That's love you. That's amazing. Out. I actually want. They're... Go ahead. I'm so sorry. I got really well, excited. They brought <laughs> him out there because they had to have him. To, to prove to, to, to the jury about those pings and how they work, because that was really all the state had. Right. And so, and so if you watch it, it's maybe there's a lot. And it's really some dry stuff. You know, it's technical stuff. But he explains it mm -hmm. so the jury can understand. And hopefully you guys will, too, if you watch it. Yeah. And when you do, you'll, you'll when you watch it, you'll understand that that, first of all, you don't have pings on your phone bill. So anybody That's who's right. showing pings on the phone bill is full of it. That's right. DTC Primetime made that really good point last. Yeah, that's good. Your phone is pinging all the time. And that guy, Michael Melson, like I said, that those two got convicted 30 years and it's almost 100 percent ping evidence. And they track the phones. They track the victim's phone. They track track those two following her all over town. And then pretty wow. soon she's missing and they're at home. And they used such a the disgusting paint. case. That was such a. I'm so glad you brought that up because that is um, that is a crime that I wanted to make a video on for a long time because it's just really close to my heart. And I know that the poor girl's remains have never been found. And my God, when you hear her family speak, oh, isn't it just heart wrenching? That's a tough one because you don't know what you know. At least what, well, you know, you just don't think. Like you said, they never found her, so right. she could even yeah. be alive. Who knows? Yeah, that's right. Here now, guys, I'm going to share this with you. So this is, um, Jennifer, this is speaking to um, uh, the question you were just asking about the time frame, okay? Right. All right. So here we go. All righty. All right. Thank you. Whenever their instruction went out. Oh, I know. We have to go back over that timeline. Okay, so he pre he had just said that it took him 20 to 30 minutes to dig, okay? So now we're going to get to the, the time frame here, okay? So this is how we broke it down. There we go.
All, All right, right, here, here we, we go. go. So, so there, there we go. go. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so, we so we see here, here <clears throat> highlighted, highlighted mm -hmm. on the morning of August 13th, he started his car at 518. He left Saratoga Trail at 546 a.m. He arrived, he arrived at, at Serby 319 at 6.53 a.m., okay? So, so he arrived there at 6.53 a.m. So he said it took him 20 to 30 minutes to dig. So let's go with the long chop. So guys, remember that. He arrived at 6.53. That's critical. There and say that's 30 minutes. That takes him to 7.23. So, so now, now 7.23, and if his story is correct, correct, or at least as part of it is correct, he still needs to take his beautiful babies, you know, you know up to where he did. did. So, so let's hop over, hop over to the discovery, to the discovery now. now. Keep that time, time 7.23, in your mind. Okay. Okay. So, so <clears throat> we have we at have 629 to 630, Watts made three unanswered, unanswered calls, calls to Robert. To Robert. So, in so in the span of a minute, he's making three, he's making phone, three calls phone calls to the person that he knows is going to be showing, showing, up showing up there. Now, remember, now remember he, arrived he arrived at 319 at 653. At 631, he sends a text to Robert because he didn't answer any of those three phone calls. Where are you at? And, and so, so Robert's, Robert's response from at 632, he's, you know, somewhere. Um, and then, I don't know why, he made another unanswered call to Robert. And then Watts responded with two messages to Robert saying, okay, I'm in survey. Where are you going first? And Robert's response immediately is, Cody Robert, DPC State. And Watts replied with a thumbs up emoji. I'm sure he was quite relieved. He wasn't on his way there. Um... So, so at 635, Watt, Watt says, okay, okay, let me, okay, okay let, me, let know me know before I leave here. here. Mm -hmm. so, so let's, let's get down. So he's sending, sending a whole bunch, bunch of messages to his coworkers. coworkers. Okay, okay, so, so let's, let's get to around, around 653, the time, the time he that he arrives. So now we're, so now at, we're at 659. Robert sends a message to Watt saying, I guess I'm headed out that way to start up the 1029, and Chad will be meeting me out there. Watt replies, okay. So, so, you know, they're, they're not going to 319 first. Now, now this is 718. So, so remember, remember, guys, we said if we go with Chris Watts' long estimate of 20 to 30 minutes, minutes if it took him 30 minutes to dig, that would take us up to 723. So this time of 718, which is about 25 minutes, Watts took a photograph of his laptop, laptop screen, screen presumably sitting in his truck, and the metadata confirms Watts was at the survey coordinates. Those who doubt that he was there, um, come on, people. The image is apparently only in a thumbnail format, and enlarging it blurs out the writing on the laptop screen. Ah, I know. A friend of mine who's actually trying to fix my Mac was over here. This was a couple weeks ago. I meant to mention this sooner, and he's an IT guy. And, and I was happening, happening, I was working on a video, I was working, I was working on some material for live stream, and I asked him about this statement saying that the image only appears in the thumbnail. He read it again and again and again with like kind of an eyebrow raise, and he did not understand how that could be or what the heck that meant. That just, you know, confirmed to me what I already suspected and many of you already suspected that that's like total BS, Okay. So, so at 740, Watch sent that sage message to Shanann's phone. If you take the kids somewhere, please let me know where you're at. So, okay, let's assume that, you know, at 718, he came back from doing the dig. So 718 a.m. to 740 a.m. is gives us, what, 22 minutes? So assuming that this portion of his statement is true... That, that would be 22, 22 minutes of him, you know, doing, doing what he claims happened with the girls, which God rest their souls. I hate even mentioning it. Please, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but this needs to be figured out, okay? So at 7.40 a.m., now he's back to his home, which I believe was in his car. And the reason is, experts have testified that 
you, you cannot, cannot take, take you know just, just the, the, the flashlight from, from a cell phone shining in through that thief hatch, hatch into the oil would be enough kinetic energy to create some kind of like a spark or ignition or an explosion. So I believe, and I proved this through other live streams and videos, that he left his phone in his car. So I believe with Watts telling Tammy Lee that the dig took 20 to 30 minutes, this timeline, guys, I think worked out. Okay, so essentially that timeline um that we just went over there gives him from 653 to 740 okay so what is that 47 minutes of being at survey 319 so let's again take his long estimate i'm missing five minutes here there somewhere but let's take his long estimate that it took him the 30 minutes to dig that still gives him 17 minutes to to handle his precious babies so in my opinion that timeline is a possibility and keep in mind that ground out there is uh that's like rock that's why yeah. he broke it or a shovel or whatever it's not like it's farm soil or something that's hard to dig in that's right it's like from what i understand the top of it is very sandy but once you get a few inches down it becomes like rock which may explain you know why um where shenan was disrespectfully left was such a shallow dig right yeah, yeah, and what I never got was, uh, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think like his coworkers, you know, he wasn't sweaty or anything. And yeah. I, I always thought that was kind of weird because I, I, that was August. It had to be 70 or 80 degrees, and he's out there, first of all, he's nervous and everything, and then he's digging, right. but then he wasn't sweaty or anything. That, that yeah. always made me suspicious. Yeah, that is definitely suspicious. And DTC Primetime says that she believes, in her opinion, it would take, you know, longer than 30 minutes to dig a shallow grave. You know, that's one of those things that, you know, um, you know, I, I know that I think some people actually went out and tried to do something like this, but I, I don't know what the results of it were. But th that's one of the, the facts that I think is always going to kind of remain in question, but it didn't need to always remain in question. I think this is something that could have been fully investigated. Well, yeah. yeah, it should have been fully investigated. It should have been, right. I mean, and there should have been no questions to be right. um, asked. I mean, the other thing that, that I would definitely say is, so he made calls before 6.53. So he, if, I mean, the, he, uh, his GPS would have said whether or not he had called while he was driving. So, you know, if he called one of his coworkers, he would have had to pull off with his kids in the car, crying and upset, you know, and he's going to call a coworker with taking the chance that they could answer and his kids are in the backseat crying. And well, why? Yeah. I mean, I don't understand that either. Well, he, he said they were, he said they were quiet. He said they were quiet on well, the ride he, out there, but, but I agree with what you said. He, he, he wouldn't be calling if they were, that's hard to believe. I'm with you on that. Now, guys, yeah, I mean, remember, it's hard to believe he would make that chance. He would take that chance because they could have said, I mean, they could have made any noise at any time. They're kids. You know, he, he wouldn't have known whether or not they were going to make a no noise when he actually made a phone call. That's what gets me is, you know, I get the text messages and stuff. There would be no noise in that. But to actually pick up the phone and call where somebody could answer and your kids are in there and you don't know what they're going to do, what they're going to say. Um, that's a chance. Okay, now listen, I agree with you. I agree with you, but here's something that we need to consider, okay? I'm just playing devil's advocate. This, this is a very good point, Jennifer and John. Um, it would have, if, if he was on his work phone, that would have meant that he would have been, you know, under that, you know, it would have hit on his GPS, right? Or it would have hit under the GeoTab monitoring system, right? So I'm looking mm -hmm. back through the discovery right now and I'm seeing, well, you know, you are right because these texts were sent from, um, they were sent from his work phone. So that's, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. The thing about him being quiet though, you got to remember, uh, you know, mom's laying back there. The, the, the kids are very intuitive. Uh, right. I, I'm sure those kids were scared to death. 
they're not going to say anything. Oh, Especially if Chris told them to be quiet, I'm making a phone call. At that and, point, I don't think those kids are going to make a sound. And I, I, I personally believe that there's a strong possibility that Bella was with consciousness and perhaps Cece was not. Sadly, um, LNL transport here says, um, if it was more than one person digging, then the dig might have gone faster, which, you know, again, see, there's all man, just imagine if this went to trial. I mean, look at us. There's only 40 people in chat here and look at how thoroughly we are covering both sides of, you know, the possibilities here. I mean, it's just unreal to me that this didn't go to trial. I think it's a good thing it didn't go to tri trial because I think you would have had a hard time. I think that he could, they could have gotten his, uh, I mean, cause honestly, when he signed his plea agreement, he basically went with Shanann killed the kids and I killed her. And I don't think that, I, I don't know that they would have been able to prove it at that point. Yeah, I don't um, know that they did enough of a job to prove it. That's a very good no, point. That, no, when he, when he was, when he did his polygraph and everything and Tammy pulled, pulled her trick on him and put the idea in his head that, uh, that it was Shannon that did it. And then they came back and Chris said, Oh yeah, she, she killed the kids. Right. They right. made him be, be, before they even charged him. It's on there somewhere where they made him retract that statement about Shannon killing the girls. So okay. he, he had retracted that before they even formally charged him. Right. If right. I'm not mistaken. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't think he wrong. did. I didn't think he I didn't think he ever I didn't think he retracted that until the Wisconsin. I think that he I thought because he didn't have to basically say anything yeah. when he signed those papers. He took um, responsibility for all of them. Yeah. But <clears throat> I don't think he had to say anything or even say, you know, I, I, that I, I, he didn't have to. But I, I think it's on that. It's yeah. on, you know, that all those tapes that got released, those video. Yeah. I think at the end there, like when his dad's there. Or maybe after Ronnie leaves so somewhere, you know, way toward the end when he's completely spent, I'm pretty sure they ask him, now, Chris, Shannon didn't kill those girls, did they? And he says no or something like that. I'm pretty See, sure. I, that, don't, I don't think I, I heard I, that. I, I don't remember that, John. But, you know, there, I don't, there, I don't either for a fact. I, I don't either, but, but yeah. I'm pretty sure it did. I'm pretty but, sure it was. Yeah, you're right. There. He didn't say anything. He just signed something like, okay, like yeah. that. Well, I mean, he might one, have won. He I, might I, do have won. <laughs> I do know this. I do know that when um, he made that, you know, full, terrible confession from Dodge, right? And then Dr. Phil went and picked up the Rusics because they wanted to announce it to the world before people found out in a different way, which I think it was wonderful that he gave them the respect and the venue to do that. You know, the one thing they said, well, you know, was at least... Dr. Phil said on their behalf, because I've been listening to that, you know, deleted episode video a lot lately that, um, well, at least now the world knows that their baby girl didn't didn't take the lives of their baby granddaughters. Right. And I know Which, Carol, yeah, I know Tarot by Undercover. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. I know Tarot by Undercover Mermaid says unless referring to the girls now, unless they were completely asleep and he had given them a lot of Benadryl or whatever they were saying their medication was. And that's a good point. And then Sarah Lati makes another good point saying that Geotab won't allow phone calls while driving or, you know, it would, it would, you know, come up as an infraction. These are all very good points. Right. That's right. Yep. That's just so evil to drive those babies out there knowing you're going to kill them because he knew what he was going to do. I just can't I believe it. I know. I think he was sick I his know. whole life. I believe. I think he was. There was. I think he was a sick man his whole life and just hit it. I think because he, was he, he knew what he was doing. Yeah, absolutely. Let, let, let me ask that. you this. Hey, yeah. let me ask you this. Um. Uh. Uh. Okay. Uh, you know. Let's say. Uh. Whatever time it was. Two thirty. Three. Four o'clock in the morning. Chris goes in there to talk to Shannon. Right. Right. And, and and he's finally brave enough now that he's going to tell her that, hey, look, I've, I've got this girlfriend. I I used to love you. Don't anymore. It's just not working out. I want right. a divorce. You know, all that. Blah, blah, blah. Right. He's, he's finally got to. He's brave enough, finally, for whatever reason. And then here's what I don't get. 
if that's the case, and Chris kind of went to her with his tail between his legs to tell her, look, Shannon, I, you know, I, I want a divorce and whatnot. Why did he get so angry? Because he's, he's clearly got, if he did it, what he said he did, that he killed his wife there and dragged her down the stairs, and then he ran the girls with him out to survey and killed them out there, that that's angry stuff. And I don't get, that's what I don't get, is if he went to her with, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, baby, I, I want a divorce, and I love this other girl, and la, la, la. But then he's angry. He's angry, though. That, shouldn't shouldn't Shannon be the one that's angry? I think he, I think he cheated that. on her. He's he's cheated on her. He's the one that cheated, and so he has to go fess up that he cheated, and so she's the one that's going to be mad and hurt. Instead, he's the right. one that's mad. Maybe she came home and couldn't keep quiet, and he just I don't know. I don't yeah, think. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I something think something doesn't that, add up because he's lying, and it, so it yeah. something doesn't add up. You're right. That's it's just right. awful. The whole thing is a mess. The I don't thing. understand why he's angry. Why is he mad at her? There's no reason right. for Chris to be mad at his yeah. wife. She didn't do anything. It did seem like he was like, that's what they kept saying. He was just so angry. And then NK was like, I don't know about you videos, but she was like, she thought she was, she did everything perfect and right. And couldn't. Right. And so why is he so mad? That's what I don't get. I feel why like she mad enough to choke him. Angry. I think NK did have a lot to do with, I'm not saying by any means, it, but I think he she had a lot to do with throwing bad thoughts in his head, and he was infatuated yeah. with her, and he just built up, build up, build up, because he was still conscious and boo and all, yeah. like in these conversations, like that, you know, try he was like, like I see where she was coming home to to try to fix it, but he wasn't totally saying oh, we're done. He was keep still talking her I just to for just one second. You guys keep talking. It's stressful. It's really stressful to watch them videos though and see. This man on there, and then, but I do believe he. I believe he. He planned, I do believe he was going to kill them, and I think he's in jail because he knows damn well it's my fault, and I, I'm taking the punishment. Um, but why he won't talk? And I know she was involved somehow. I just do. I can't get that out of my out of my clutch. I just the lies, the lie. There's no like, if you weren't telling the truth, you would tell the truth. There was no reason to go into lie. But there's a lie every every minute. There is um. There's a, there's a lot that, that, that honestly, the NK, I mean, there's a lot that makes me think that, and you know, that there was some type of confrontation at the house yeah. with NK that maybe she had came over there and said, yep. you know what, uh, you're leaving your wife. I want to know this. She's yeah. standing at the door, whatever, however, you know, it I went down, but too. yeah, there has to be. Because well, I don't think be she said she wasn't supposed to be there. I think there was a reason why he said she wasn't. Somebody wasn't supposed yeah. to be there and it got out of control. And yeah. uh, he's coming. That's back. what I think. And now he's going uh, to like I, a I, When Chris said that, I always thought he was talking about Bella. Bella yeah, wasn't supposed to no. be there when he was dragging the wife down the stairs. I and that yeah, well, that, I mean, I think any of those possibilities are, you know, yeah. possibilities. Yeah. Were those kids not locked in their rooms when they went to bed? Now, I was under the impression no. that they were I locked in their rooms when they went to bed. Yeah, I don't believe I, I never heard that. They weren't yeah, locked. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. They used to get out. That's part of, bed. that. I thought that that was part of Baby Wise. I mean, that's one of the things that. Oh, it, it may be, but I, yeah. I never heard of them. Yeah, I don't think but, you know, to do who it. knows what the circumstances were that evening? Because you know, I definitely think Shanann was on top of all of those baby wise practices. She was very regimented in her personality, and it seems like obviously, guys, Chris was not in his right mind. So it's like details like that probably could be figured out. But as far as we we we're just going to have to speculate about it, you know. Yeah. Well, well I, I, how could we say, well, here's the thing is that, you know, we know that he let, he went outside of that house. So yeah. in order for him to assure that his children would not follow him or go out with him or whatever, they like kind of would have had to been locked, right? Wouldn't yeah. he have locked their doors? I don't even know. Uh, I, don't th I don't think he did because he's running on the idea that they're asleep. He thought he killed them, right? Isn't that what he's saying? I, I don't think he did. I, I don't. I, I don't know, man. I, I flip flop on that. I thought he... that. I kind of thought he did. Maybe that might have been somewhat true because of, 
him sealing the autopsy, he wanted to see the bruises. But I don't know. You're, don't not, know. you're not going to see anything. Are, are you? Did you read what those kids looked like when they dragged them out of those tanks? You're not going to. Yeah, gonna, I did. Yeah. But I just want to know why did he seal them? Like we already, like I, nobody's going to look at them, but he didn't want them, or was he talked into it? Like that's where. Is there a reason that he said when they were smothered? Didn't he say like, and that's why the autopsy says they were smothered instead of strangled or something or the opposite? Yeah, they, you can't, you're not going to be able to tell the, the manner of death, I don't think, on those yeah. kids. I'm just afraid they look bad. Let me just read a couple. Was of it was it the night. was it his defense that sealed the autopsies or was it, it was the prosecution? His, it was his defense that sealed the autopsies. So okay, um, I wasn't I know, sure. I know Terrell by Undercover Mermaid says that's the only way LNL transport. I agree. It could have been pre dug the day before or something like that, or the ground softened up beforehand, beforehand, before this day event. Now, I also, you know, di you know, pulled all the historical weather records. We could take a look at that sometime too. But let's see, Mrs. O made a good comment here too. Yeah, Mrs. hey, that's good thinking. Yeah, I did that once myself. I, I did that once myself. What if he brought them with him when he dug the hole? Because he get home for a long time. There was some speculation about that, too. Mrs. O says really quick, this is a really good point, guys. Remember when Scott Peterson was given the exercise of loading a weight similar to his wife's onto the boat? He couldn't do it unaided. Why didn't they do the same with CW? Exactly. Yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah, that was enough. They didn't. They didn't want this. To, they definitely didn't want this to go to trial for whatever reason. However shoddy their work was, they didn't want this to go to trial in any way, shape, or form. They sealed off the kids' medical records. They sealed off Shanann's medical records. They sealed off everything. Yeah. Um, because they, you know, they did not want. Because if this would have gone to trial, you know, things would have been brought up that, you know, nobody. Probably, I mean, it was probably in the best interest for both families yeah, um, right. for it to not go to trial. And, you know, that 111 minute phone call that, you know, that is one thing that Nicole Kessinger is absolutely lying in that. Now, I don't know why oh, yeah. she's lying or what she's lying about, but I can tell you that from my own personal experience that. Yeah. When you actually see somebody for the last time, and that's the last time that she really had any kind of conversation with him before his family went missing, she would have remembered every right. detail in clarity because it would have been seared in her mind that's forever. Right, Jennifer, you know Here, here's the thing about it. that. Here's the thing about that. The, the, the cops had Watt's phone on Monday at 3 p.m. They already had his phone. Chris submitted it. They took it downtown. They downloaded everything off of it. They brought it back a few hours later. They said, thank you very much, Chris. And they're, they've they got all Chris's phone calls and everything on that phone. They're, they they're, The cops know what that conversation was for, right. for 111 minutes. Well, it, 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 you don't know because they haven't released it, but the cops know. They know exactly well, they what they know. How would because they know they it was bugged, on there? It was, they bugged Chris's phone when they had it, and they watched it. This house happened on Sunday read, night before the. This yeah. was on Sunday night before the murders. Yeah, that if one you read was the on discovery. Netflix. They watched Nicole's house also. Yeah, they did. Okay, but this was. Oh, go ahead, honey. This was before. This was before. This wasn't Monday night. This was Sunday night before Shanann even got home. So they well, had no bugs, right. no nothing. Unless they had burners. R right, but they had. Go ahead. But they, they got Chris, they got Chris's phone something. the next day at three o'clock, and so they got everything that was on that phone. Boom, it's right there. Like yeah, I may have given like them a very good indication. Let me just read a couple of comments because I don't want to forget the people in, in the chat here. So, Anna Falaxis says you. she it's okay. She reminds us that Chris Watts said she puts this in quotes, and this was a quote. He says we had a shovel and a rake, and then somebody below <laughs> says pronouns don't lie. Now DTC Prime Time. And I'm interested if you could expand further on this DTC primetime, because I always love to hear what you what you think. Um, she says, he had to dig, bury poor Shanann, and then cover her. Who's watching the kids? Come on, ridiculous. So do you think DTC primetime, that means that someone else was there then? Or what are you thinking about that, honey? Okay, that's all. I just I've got a question. Yeah, I've got a question that I've never heard anybody ask about this. 
Okay. Uh, it, let's say it went down the way Chris said uh, when he was in Dodge. Okay. That uh, I guess I guess what he said was that he killed his wife first, and then it was Cece, and then it was Bella. Isn't that what he said? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and why why Cece first? Well, I I personally believe that you know from you know. Sherilyn Cato's reports, I don't give a whole lot of credence because she has been caught telling some tall tales, but I do think that generally there is something to her reporting. You know, she did report out to us that Chris had said something about, you know, he had, he had, he had, he had tried to take the lives of his, his precious daughters in the home and basically they woke up, um, which might account for some of the bruising around the eyes and whatnot. And I personally think God, it hurts my heart to say this, that Cece never fully regained consciousness and Bella did. Mm. That would yeah, but I'm just wondering, Watts had a choice there, which bit. one? Yeah. I think she was actually gone for a little bit and, and um, I think she was just, you're right, she was like, she was, yeah, she was like brain dead, like, I don't yeah. believe that. I think he did her first because she would have been the rowdiest running around I don't think he expected Bella to fight back at all. Yeah. And I think she died first. Or yeah, yeah I don't know, man. I don't. Just because well, of stuff I heard. Michelle How do you Garvey make that decision, said, too? I, I know. I mean, my God. I could, how, do, how would we even get in that frame of mind? Um, Michelle Garner here says, SW's family on Dr. Phil said that's when her name got cleared. And referring to um, the Dodge interviews. And I do believe that that is... That is true. It wasn't until the Dodge interviews when Shanann's name was fully cleared, as her family stated, because until that point, Chris Watts left it lingering out there that Shanann had done this terrible thing and then he had done what Shanann had done to the girls, right? I so. just feel like that's not the whole reason they went there. I think I feel like one of them at least wanted him to say, but then again, they were up there like they were but Nikki's best friend. I don't know. Could it be a tactic? I guess. I don't know. I, feel I think like her dad had it. Her dad had a lot of, I think her dad had a lot of power. I feel like that too. Nikki's dad. Nikki's dad had, I think, had some power. He had like some pull. Yeah, yeah, he, I think that they protected her because, you know, if you, when you, when you go back to that 111 minute phone call, which you like to go back to <laughs> Kelly, because Never it is did. very important. But <laughs> yes. Yeah. And one, and one of the things that um, Tammy Lee says that I noticed that she said when you played that like a few times, I never picked this up before, but if you listen, she says to Chris, Chris, what did you talk about? And then that 111 minute phone call. And he said, uh, he, he said something like, was that before or after Shanann got home? Okay. Well, when did you talk to what, what was going on after? Because to my, to everybody's knowledge and what, you know, Nicole has said, she didn't talk to you until late Monday afternoon. So why would you say, before That's Shan got home. Yeah. Why would you say before she got home or after she got like, mm, what are you talking true. before she got home or after she got home? Because that doesn't make any sense because the first time you had contact with her supposedly after she got home was like 24 hours later, you know, was like that next afternoon. So why would you be thinking right. he wouldn't be, that wouldn't be, that was like a, that was kind of like his slip up. Like he didn't mean to say, you could tell he didn't mean to say that. Like he honestly was saying, "Oh, when he you, before, yeah." Because I don't think he misspoke. I think he spoke truthfully in the fact that he did have some contact with NK, and if it wasn't on the phone, then it was in person. But he had well, some contact with her between the one eleven phone call and six sixteen that morning when she pinged in his house. I agree with that, and it didn't it didn't show up on NK's phone records. And since you noted that, I love to go back to that 111 minute phone call. I'm just going to play four minutes here about that 111 minute phone call and the timeline and the 6:16 a.m. ping ping being the next thing that happened on um, NK's phone. So here it is. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> If you watch oh that Michael Melson theory? video, you'll know that that ping doesn't matter. I, I am really excited to watch it. Well, here, take a look at what I had here, and I would love suggestions. So I just put this documentary out today, and if it's not complete, I will redact it. <laughs> Seriously. I want it to be, you know, tight stuff. 
14th and into later that day, Monday, August 13th. So, you know, as I looked through all of Kessinger's phone bells, uh, or you know, her phone bell from the dates of July 14th through August 13th, you know, what I did was I looked at the longest call on each of these, you know, pages of her phone bell. So I just want to note that the 111 minute phone call was really out of character for their conversations. This wasn't their normal pattern of talking to each other. So I went through and I looked at the longest phone call that NK held on each of these pages and the longest phone call that she had with Watts on each of these pages. And we find that, ah, other than the 111 minute phone call, guys, the next three longest calls lasted 51 minutes, 52 minutes, and 54 minutes, respectively. So you see... That's, That's a really, a really long, long phone call. call. We, we could probably say, say there's, there's only, only a short period of time, time that we don't have, have their phone records according, according to when they, when they say their relationship was occurring. It's probably, it's probably safe, safe to say that was the longest phone, phone call that they ever had. had. So, even so even when you look at, at so ping information, this little, you know, unofficial timeline here, we see that their 111 minute phone call pointed to by the third red arrow starts at 9.28 that Sunday evening, August 12th, and it ends at 1119. There's no activity on NK's phone until the 6.16 a.m. ping the morning of August 13th, we see right here, when she had a one minute, one minute phone call to her friend Jim, Jim is highlighted in yellow. In yellow. The, next the next activity, guys, on her phone was not until 2.28 p.m. And that call, and that call was, was initiated in Platteville. That's, that's where she works. works. And again, and again this is a very unusual pattern for NK to not have any activity on her phone throughout the whole day. day. So, now so now I also told, told you guys that... The 111-minute phone call was conspicuously missing from the official discovery timeline. So just let me show you what I mean here. So here you see we are, this is the official redacted discovery. So you see right here in the middle of the page begins August 13th. Well, if you just go up a little bit, you're going into August 12th. Now, I want you to see how they included like everything that happened on August 12th. Everything, Everything that Chris Watts, Watts did on August 12th is in this, in this discovery. discovery. Look, at this, this is a lot, lot of information as compared to the other dates in the, the official timeline in the discovery. It's like five or six pages long, okay? So look, August 12th starts right here. We have everything that Watts did starting at 7.32 a.m. that morning, okay? okay? So now, so now if we go back down, down or up or down, or down. I'm, I'm scrolling down. down. <laughs> but we're going, but up, we're going up in time, time right? right? We get, we get to, to the, the evening. evening. So, so at 21.13, 21, so, so that, that would be 9.13, 9, um, we see, see that Shan sent a message to Addie explaining things. things. Um, um, it, not at 21.29, which is 9.29, we have Shanann made an unanswered call to Watts. Well, the reason well, the that reason likely is, my friend, is because a minute, is because before, a minute that, before that, at 9.28, or in military time, 21.28, that's when that 111-minute phone call began. began. There, is no there is no mention of that phone call here in the official discovery. I just find I just that to be... Mm, I heard that I have some bad echoing here, so I'm going to stop playing that. But, um, yeah, I can't remember what my point was in showing that other than you know that I love to show that, <laughs> Jennifer. And that <laughs> sounds like a football game. I thought that was really funny. But I just, guys, I just think it is so critical, and I think the fact that it is not included in Discovery and that the next thing, according to NK's records or phone records, is that 6.16 a.m. ping – John, you may be totally, or whoever said this may be totally right. And it was, I can't remember who said it, that they were in some kind of contact between the end of the 111 minute phone call and the 616 a.m. ping. But that would have to be either through a third party app or in person. 
Well, if her phone pinged, because I think that that ping is important because first off, she didn't clock into work that day. So we don't even know what time she got there. Mm -hmm. Um, So if she's pinging near Frederick and we do have her other pings, we show that the only times that she did ping on that specific tower was actually when she was at Chris Watts's house. So, um, you know, I mean, it, it, it's just, you know, I don't, I, I never believe in coincidences and I think it would be a very big coincidence that she just happened to ping on this one cell tower driving to work while she's calling Jim at six sixteen in the morning. And the only reason she did ping is because she made that phone call. It doesn't say, that doesn't mean that her phone wasn't sitting there for seven right. hours that's right. without that's her true. making a phone call. That's right. Yep, that's totally right. And guys, sorry about the echoing, by the way. DCT Primetime just suggested if I use earbuds, which I'll do next time I share a video like that, I will try that trick to reduce the echoing. So I'm very sorry about that. But yeah, you're totally right, Jennifer. And you know, um, I'm actually going to have to wrap this up because um, we've been going about two and a half hours and I have to go do just a couple things with my son. I know that it's late, but we are on spring break right now. But, um, you know, oh, thank- fun, 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 fun. But I mean, do you have any final things to say, John? Thank you guys so much for coming up on panel and you too, Joan. I really appreciate it. And everybody in chat, you guys contributed a lot. And, you know, this really just gives us a, a lot more to think about. And I wish that we didn't have to think about it. I wish that it was fully investigated and worked out by law enforcement, like we entrust them to do in this country. But unfortunately I believe it was not. I, I Thank you very much but for, for doing all this, because I think it is important to, you know, I mean, yeah, Chris is where he belongs. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. you know what? If there's somebody out there who had a hand in this, uh, like NK, and you know, justice isn't served until the peop- the proper people are put behind bars, all of them. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly it. So, yeah, John, do you have anything else to say? Yeah, I just want to tell you thanks for having me, and uh, yeah, thank you so thank much. Your subs, thank your subs for being so nice, and yeah. I would urge anyone that that wants to know about this kind of thing to go watch that Mike and Melson, Michael Melson video. Michael Melson. I'm going to go watch that. Heather, I'm going to go watch that. Yeah. She, she went missing. There's a couple, they're both behind bars right now in South Carolina in the Myrtle beach area. I was down there right after this happened. I remember, you know, see, I have some family down there. I remember seeing the posters and just people were talking about this all over the place. I mean, there are a lot of hearts that were broken with this young, beautiful girl missing. And it was, it was, I, I actually hope to do a video about this very soon. I've been wanting to for a long time. And yeah, they, they, they only know. got, they only got convicted of kidnapping because they never yeah. did. Nobody. But, but the the point, whole point is the whole having Michael Melson there and explaining how those pings work. And for yeah. one thing, you don't have a, you don't have a ping on your phone bill. That's so right. This, like, these people that keep showing, a, a phone bill with a ping on it. Well, there's, does your phone bill have a ping on it? Right. There's more to it than that. We were talking about this. DTC primetime brought this up very intelligently in the last live stream. If, you know, say, let's just say, just for the sake of, of, of working out this example, let's just say that Nicole Kessinger started that 111 minute phone call at her home and, in you know, so the initiated ping was in Thornton, but then she drove up to Frederick. She would have passed six Verizon towers on the way, but we're not going to see all of those towers being transferred in her phone bill. Verizon perhaps might have the record of that, but we are never going to have the record of that. And that kind of record would never show up on a person's phone. Yeah, now. Right. And, and here's the thing with this Michael Melson guy. I put that in chat, by the way, everyone, Michael Melson regarding the Heather Elvis case. Thank you, John. You're welcome. And, and here's the thing. See, um, you know, you have Verizon, you have Sprint, you have AT&T and all these companies have their own software. That's right. And then depending on what kind of phone you have, or whether it's Apple or Android or whatever, mm-hmm. well, this Michael Melson wrote the software that's it's above all that. Oh, there's wow. only that's one phone, and all these phone companies go through this one 
it's Oracle or one of those companies like that. Yeah. And they yeah. all, they have their own software, but they have to go through Melson software. So he knows every ping. Not only does he know what, what tower you pinged off of, he right. knows what there's three reflectors on the tower. He can tell you which reflector you pinged off of. Oh yeah. That's amazing. Now, I okay. Just so there, there's no, this idea with this ping, mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 you you got it all wrong. Anybody who's claiming that ping matters, they got it all wrong because you well, don't know I, anything about ping or how it works. I, I just want to show you this, John. And obviously this man knows a hell of a lot more than I do. But, you know, some of the subscribers or people that are watching know that I share that I worked in the telecom industry just as a site acquisition representative just for four and a half years. But I was able, the map that I'm showing you right now on the screen I was actually able to get from my old boss, who's the guy who has a site acquisition firm down in the Philadelphia area. And he was able to give me a record of the cell phone towers in 2018 and the ones that service Verizon 3 LTE, which was a service Nicole Kessinger had back in 2018. So the cell phone map that you see on your screen right now is like as close as I've seen at least to capturing what actually was existing at that moment in 2018. So I'm at least like aware and attentive to what you're saying. And the point that you're making is a really great point. And um, I'm actually going to watch the Michael Nelson video before I go to bed tonight. <laughs> it, it, like I said, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's technical. So if you don't, yeah, it's pretty boring. You might fall asleep. It'd be good to go to go to sleep with it, but. <laughs> Nancy Ann, learn, don't bother. <laughs> you will learn about about those pings, and also he goes through stuff that that, like you say, well, she deleted this or she deleted that. Well, yeah. he goes through all that and how you how they recover all that data off your phone. You're not deleting anything, right? That's right. It. They they go through Tammy and Sydney Moore with mm -hmm. an R and Moore. They go through their phones. And, and they got everything. They tried to delete everything too. Made they tried to delete out. everything, and, and there and there uh, and there are a few statements in there, a few texts that did get deleted that he couldn't recover, and he tells you why. But for okay. ninety-eight percent of that stuff, they got or more than that off mm -hmm. their phone, and they had all the pings, and he explains all the technical stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and you should be able to, after you watch it, realize that. This, these ping videos that these other people put out are are inaccurate. That's all okay. I'm saying. That is really great tip. And again, guys, I'm putting that in the chat. It's Michael Melson regarding the Heather Elvis case. Let's all watch it. Come back next time more informed. Thank you guys so much, panel. Jennifer, Joan, John, Mick Smith. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, moderators, and thank you, chat. You're really awesome. Thanks, thank Kelly. You. Have thank a great spring God break. Bless. Yeah, thank you so much. I'll be seeing you guys real soon. All right. God bless. All right. God bless.